IDBM Challenge Season 1 Episode 8 They say technology changes organizations and the way we work but how do actually companies manage with this change? How do they implement disruptive technologies in a way that doesn't disrupt the organization itself? In this episode you'll find out more. Enjoy! to uh, yet another episode of Under the Lamp. I'm your host Mika Lehtonen and we are joined here today by Xenia Avetisova. Thanks for having us. Thank you for inviting. Um, so could we start by, if you could tell a bit about your background. So, so we are right now in, in Tieto, yes. Tieto premises. Um, yeah, so could you tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, I've been now working in Tieto for over two years and I joined from Accenture and before that I worked at Fjord. I have a background in uh, interaction design and customer experience. So those are the key driving forces for my work also here. And the reason why I have also joined Tieto to, to see how these things can also be utilized in very IT environment and very kind of technology driven corporation. And um, what I'm doing here now, I'm part of a data-driven business mm -hmm. uh, startup. Uh, it's our internal startup, which is concentrating on the ways of utilizing data in different ways and finding new approaches to using it and working with artificial intelligence and machine learning and uh, um, many disruptive technologies. So we are also thinking about how innovation brings effect and how to build business in, in an environment which is completely changing all the time. And mm. what are the values, well, like the human values, which need to be part of this environment as well. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> but, so can you tell a bit about like how, because um, Tieto is traditionally seen as, a, as you mentioned, like IT company, tech driven company. How has it been to kind of bring in the human side of things to your processes? It's not always easy mm. because uh, in many cases when we uh, set up the projects it's, um, or make an offer for the projects, there is a certain problem that our customer or the customer team has in mind that they want to jump into solving. Yeah. They say, oh, this system doesn't work or, well, this process doesn't work. And they want to go in right away to find a solution. But in order to bring this human perspective, we have been also looking into you know, utilizing naturally the design thinking methodology where, or the approach even, not only methodology, where you don't jump to conclusions right away. The important thing is to understand what is the problem and figure out why that occurs. Mm -hmm. So the causes are not always so obvious as they seem to many people and also finding the same solution as you have used last time in a different case might not be the right answer for this problem. Yeah, yeah. And that's why what we are um, with a group of enthusiasts and the group of professionals in Tieto in different offices in multiple countries because we're a huge company, we have 14,000 people working and not okay. only in Finland. Uh, so we are actually present globally in uh, in many countries and in Europe in multiple countries as well. So we have this uh, um, internal group of excellence with the design thinking mm -hmm. when we run workshops, when we share our vision with the sales teams, with engineers, with financial controllers, in order to make them understand that the perspective of the customer, perspective of the end user, that's what needs to be taken into account when working on projects, when figuring out the solutions. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, even if you know that something might work and you can jump straight to solving the problem, that might not necessarily be the best way. That first of all, you need to open up and explore and uh, find alternatives and think outside the boxes and think outside of the, of the things that you know from before. So take as many viewpoints as possible before you jump into making a conclusion. And this is the difference to the traditional approach of solving problems. And uh, over the last years, we have had quite many initiatives to make this design thinking understood 
in the company, mm. not only by designers. We have a design studio. We have very professional approach to design, user experience and UI and graphic design and all types of of stuff, but that's not enough. You can't mm, mm. have a design studio to solve the problems of the huge corporation yeah, where yeah. we have very different type of roles present. So what we have been doing also from the corporate perspective of Tieto, there is a program which is called Learning as a Lifestyle, which uh, has several different tracks. And one of the first priorities was also design thinking. And what it means is that to all the employees, in Tieto, there is an online course and learning environment which is available, which gives the basis and gives very good resources and contact information to the professionals who can support mm. and help and make design thinking and methodologies part of any project, be it IT, be it infrastructure, be it anything else. So. Oh, wow. Okay. And as a follow up, um, how do you understand design thinking in Tieto? Because there's quite a lot of kind of Maybe not confusion, but like diverse ways to kind of understand it. But so, what's your take on on this in theatre? Or do you have like a single unified <coughs> view on it? This is a very good question. So, what uh, uh, what we have been, uh, what we came to, like the the understanding of design thinking, and what we try also to let our colleagues take uh, on board as the approach is that design thinking is a way of solving problems. Mm. And it's also a way of putting human perspective and human emotions into the center of what we're doing. And that's a quite complicated situation with theater because we don't always work with the end users. Mm. We work with our customers, which are other big traditional corporations who yeah. have their end users. Or it might be that our customers have someone in between the end users. If you think of forest industry or wood industry, it's, there is the, the chain is quite long. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's why we, we try to bring this perspective, or our aim is to bring the perspective that we always need to think of the customer and then the end customer. And by understanding what they need and what are their approaches to using the products or using the services, we're able to make those services relevant. And also another thing is that um, how we understand or how we've been utilizing it is that things are not done in isolation. Like we as Tieto ourselves, we cannot solve all the problems that our customers mm. or end users have. That's why we need to be part of ecosystems. And we have uh, also been finding out over the years that there is not one ecosystem that would solve all the problems. There are multiple ecosystems of partners, of researchers, of students, of users, of organizations, of various industries. Mm. Uh, which can come together in order to solve real problems of the users or real problems that might be uh, putting the roadblocks to uh, being more efficient or being more happy at work or being more happy in your real life. And uh, what we have been also looking into is uh, connecting the dots between the private sector, like private business and mm. uh, you know, prof for profit making <clears throat> business and public sector which are the services that we as uh, citizens or as humans we end up using anyways and needing anyways. And they seem to be quite isolated in many times from the business. And mm, there are also yeah, different yeah. experience that you have with using governmental sites and using the services from like the, uh, you know, consumer, consumer uh, any consumer services, mm, not to name mm. any, but uh, also the experience at work is very, is something that uh, kind of puts uh, different boundaries on people when you are using the tools, which are not kind of uh, which are not uh, maybe intuitive enough. So how to change this all and how to mm. make it so easy for us to work and to be happy at home and to have this balance? So I think at the back of our minds, that's something that we have and something that drives us forward with different projects that. We don't only need to build a new system, but we need mm. to make the system fit into a way of working and way of living and make it easier for the person who's using it to reach the goals that he or she has for, for this purpose. Okay. And I think that's, that's where design thinking and kind of this that you mentioned <coughs> earlier, this um, kind of empathic approach to business and this human, how do you say, human centered, um, that's kind of when you combine those. Mm -hmm. That's where the real power comes from, because I, I guess like the tendency is to see when you say that, you know, you utilize data, then it becomes like this discourse that, you know, we are kind of this control state kind yeah. of things. But could you elaborate a bit on that? Kind of how do you combine them? This is, 
always a very interesting question about uh, the ethical aspects of using the data and the ethical aspects of uh, utilizing technology as well. And our firm belief is that technology is not a driving force. Still, the human spirit, as uh, Einstein has said in, in his quote that we've been using and that we believe in it, that the human spirit must prevail over technology. And he has said it already a very long time ago. And uh, the technological advancement will not stop. And having already understanding that we are not moving in the linear way, or if mm. we are, we are, meant, we are probably soon falling off the grid, but it's uh, the world we're living in is uh, quite exponential. So to kind of explain, which I, I, I'm sure you know what it means, but that mm. the breakthroughs can happen overnight or in, in an instant. Let's take, for example, the virtual reality and augmented reality and this mixed reality. So I've been working in Tieto for the last few years driving this, so understanding or learning, attempting to understand how we can use this more, how we can use this to advance the communication, advance the emotional connection between brands or humans, and it's uh, kind of humans between themselves or brands with humans, so to say. <laughs> and we have been um, creating different, uh, or bringing to life different ideas we have with the use of these technologies and testing it. And mm. uh, for example, uh, we have we have one uh, one virtual reality prototype about uh, the retail experience how you can uh, shop within the virtual reality without having to ever touch the real objects you can already see their scale their uh, texture and and a lot of stuff and you can position them in a different way and you for that you only need like two by two meters and the HTC Vive so anyone is welcome to come and try like we have launched it last year at Slush after maybe several weeks of working uh, in, uh, in a very experienced team of uh, kind of user experience expert and the graphic designer and the coder and kind of lead mm. uh, concept uh, person. So we have created something we believed in and we wanted to test it. It wasn't a customer assignment, it wasn't any uh, other project. So we have mm. just launched the prototype and it wasn't finished when we presented it at Slush. But uh, last year we had the, over the two days more than 300 people trying it and giving us feedback. After that we have taken it and we have done some modifications and we have continued in a slower pace but showing it in different events and different uh, events that we have mm. organized ourselves. And we have created a lot of, or we have received a lot of feedback and we created better understanding of what does what does it mean to utilize this technology? What does it mean to be completely in the digital space? Then we have another track for uh, augmented reality, which is something different, but we are constantly wondering the meaning of this and, mm -hmm. uh, and what, is, what is the implication of having more of this technology entering our lives? What is the implication of the price uh, points going down so that not only the kind of, uh, you know, businesses or very wealthy individuals can afford this type of entertainment or tools, but you know, Microsoft is coming out with very approachable and affordable devices mm, other than mm. the HoloLens, which was quite a costly thing. So it wasn't for a consumer <laughs> business. Yeah. And then Apple is enabling mm -hmm. all the new devices or all the devices with the newer software with this uh, augmented reality uh, capabilities. So what does it mean that now mm -hmm. we have this not only kind of a flat screen uh, with, the, with the stuff, but we can really bring to life the 3D elements and we can mix the digital and the physical world? Yeah. Ah, these are the questions. I don't have the answer, <laughs> but we, we are constantly thinking uh, about the meaning of this technology that we are introducing. And we also have realization that we are not, um, not only we are kind of following some trends, but we are creating them as well. And we're influencing the world or the society or nearby kind of people and the users with what we are putting out on the market. So we definitely need to be quite uh, cautious about what is, what is it that we are presenting and what we are end up using as well, because we are using the same services as we are creating. Yeah. I mean, definitely interesting years coming up. Right. Yes. Um, I think we are going to continue the discussion in, uh, in season two. So if you want to uh, find out more, please uh, check out the season two. But um, to wrap things up, uh, we have been asking our uh, previous guests um, a series of 10 word associations. 
10 word associations. Yeah. Okay. So what does that mean? <laughs> so I'll give you a word and okay. then you'll give me like whatever comes first into your mind. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah, okay. <laughs> as much as you can get ready for this <laughs> one. <yeah>. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, success. Ooh, dreams. Business. Money. Space. Love. <laughs> I love space. <laughs> That's the only relation, I guess, at this point. But you asked for association, so I like it. That's the first time I hear that. <laughs> okay. Um, technology. Oh. It's like, I want to say everything, because technology <laughs> is, is everywhere. So it's like uh, everything. I don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, future. Oh. Human. Because I believe in human values and in our future, we really need to be concentrated on, on what us being a part of the bigger picture. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, innovation. Drive. We need to be so driven <laughs> in order to innovate that uh, it's just, I think they come one and another for me together. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, design. Thinking. <laughs> 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 I, I have been uh, talking about design thinking quite a lot this in past years, so I like design thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, strategy. Oh, thoughtfulness. Mm -hmm. IMDB. IDBM. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next one is um, IDBM. <laughs> I actually mix those up a lot, like and every time, and I know I'm not the only one. So the second yeah. one was IDBM. Yeah. Is, is the movie database. Not the first IDBM. one. Not the movie. The IMDb. first one was like, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. So, okay. The second one is uh, fun experience and meeting new people. I think it's the perfect arena to do that. Thank you so much, Kelly. You're welcome. My pleasure. Hi.